Well, the great man, Jamie Wall's alongside me. Um, we've hijacked the top table. Finally, some common sense, um, you know, uh, so, some incisive analysis is going to come from a head table to a press conference at the World Cup, mate. It's, it's been too long since yeah. I've been able to sit here and give my thoughts. So <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. That's, i got to talk about the singlet, mate. Yeah. That is nice. Where did you steal that one? Uh, no, I, I purchased it from the club shop over the road. We're at, obviously at uh, Leon uh, Rugby Club, which yep. is a top 14 uh, side, and I really quite like their merch. And... You know, got the old dinner for two shirt, and um, yeah, I just re- want to get the guns out and give it a nudge out in Leon. You're way too tan to be a rugby journo. What's happened? Look, I'm not going to lie to you. We had a week off last week. Yeah. Um, we might have gone to a, an, an island out in the Mediterranean called Ibiza uh, with a couple of the other boys. Um, that's where I got the tan. Beautiful. And I'm guessing that's not 29.99 that t-shirt. Uh, I actually got a 20% discount because um, she was so happy that a New Zealander had come to the store. Yeah. <laughs> How much are you looking forward, you know, from a rugby fan's perspective? You know, you've been involved in rugby your whole life, right? To get to Stade de France, to see France, uh, a, a side that's been humming along for years to take on New Zealand on a home soil to, to open a World Cup. Yeah, this is going to be huge, man. Like, this is uh, it's a, it's a match that's been just forecast as probably the most anticipated game of, uh, anticipated opening game of Rugby World Cup probably ever. And uh, the, the, the All Blacks have been going on about the atmosphere and the crowd and everything, which is kind of odd for yeah. them. They never really kind of bring that up, um, but they have been. And if even the, it's, it's getting into their line of thinking, then it's going to be something incredible because we remember that game back in 2021 yeah. when France just absolutely pumped the All Blacks and you could feel it through the TV. So I just can't wait to get there and be a part of that. So, so you think that has left an imprint on their memory, that the crowd, the noise, the hostility. Because you speak to French journalists who say like 10, 15 years ago, it was a very quiet place. It was almost boring. At Times have changed thanks to their results. Yeah, absolutely. There's a real buzz about this French team. Um, it has been a bit up and down uh, over the last couple of weeks, just given the amount of injury concerns uh, that they've had. And we've got now got a bit of a controversy with one of their players um, coming in who almost did a bit of prison time a couple of years back. Uh, so it's been a bit of sort of it's, it's feeling a little bit like they're slipping back into being what you'd normally associate with a French side, uh, but at the same time, man, like they're, they're so good across the field. It's going to take a real, really, really big performance by the All Blacks to pull this off. I think. Yeah, lots of talk amongst New Zealand fans, of course, about the injuries in the All Blacks. But what about Cyril Bay is not there? Uh, Willems is out. How big a loss do you think they are? Yeah, I think out of all of them, I think Willems are in by you know, just disrupting their, their type five just enough. And speaking with some of the French journalists, they, they reckon that Chalero, the guy that's coming in, is a little bit of a liability. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's off the field because he yeah. almost went to prison for beating a guy up. Uh, but at the same time, he, he's the sort of guy that they said can either win your game or lose lose it just by himself. Um, and so I think that might be an, an area that the All Blacks might want to target uh, if, he gets on, if he gets on the park. But... Uh, but at the same time, I mean, out in the backs, they're missing the first five and the second five. Um, don't, worry, don't get me wrong, Jalabi is a fantastic player and everything, but it's just going to slightly adjust the way they play, and they play a very refined sort of game. And and I think that, again, you know, the All Blacks, apart from that bad result at Twickenham, at least they've been consistent in the selections in that area. And they've got fully fit, healthy guys, uh, apart from Geordie Barrett now. Um, so that might be... That might be an area where the, the game might be decided. I don't think France, and tell me if I'm wrong here, mate, you watch more than I do. I, I don't think France are as sharp as I saw in 2022. Conversely, well, New Zealand couldn't be as bad as they were in 2022. So um, they still start favourites, though, France, considering the players New Zealand don't have at their disposal. Is the 31-0 and 0 in group stage massively under threat? Yeah, I think it is. Well, it's just the most under threat. It's been, I think, perhaps since... Uh, maybe 999, there was a bit of buzz about that English team that, that, that took on the always They turned out to be rubbish. Um, but I think this this is a big, big test. The, people forget that this All Black side, um, they're, they're the only team that's never lost a pool game that's incredible. Uh, before. And it's not a record that they want to set um, because they've set enough unwanted records over the last couple of years. This is not another one. Olivia Manias, um, I'm not sure as strong a historian of New Zealand rugby as you are. Um, sounds like he's been pretty um, uh, what's an articulate word I can come up with he's completely bagged um, this current mob uh, saying they're the worst New Zealand side of all time has he got a point? No there's got to be worse sides isn't there? 
Well, he certainly managed to generate a headline. Um, but I, I think that I think if you're talking about a body of work, I mean, he's sort of at least kind of pointing in the right direction. I think that the All Blacks have gone five and one this season, and up until Twickenham, I don't think you could really fault the way that they were playing at all. Uh, but if they turn up and play as badly as they did at Twickenham, and you got to remember that's that's the top All Black side that went out there. They're not going to be changing much um, in in terms of personnel. Uh, if they don't have to. So if they play as poorly as they did, um, then, yeah, he's, he, he does have a point because that's a record loss. Yeah. You know, it was it was one thing um, to watch Ulex lose. It's another thing to watch them lose in the worst possible scoreline, the worst scoreline they've ever had in their entire history. And I was there for that. It honestly felt like we were at Alice Park. There was that many South Africans there. Uh, but really, you, even though the result didn't really matter, expecting a much better performance out of the All Blacks in that game. A couple more before I let you go. Um, more broadly, if we look at the tournament, sure. um, is it as wide open as all the pundits suggest? It is it really four or five teams could win this? Well, as a typical naval gazing New Zealander yeah. who uh, pays very little attention to <laughs> the world out the rugby world outside of our own shores, what do they play rugby? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it is very hard to pick. Um, I'm looking at Paul B, thinking, man, you know, Scotland could really upset. That whole thing. We're all thinking about Ireland, South Africa. Upset job. Scotland, yeah, Scotland might have have something to say there. Um, Fiji are going in as group favourites. <laughs> uh, so if they don't top that group, it would be make a mess of like the way that they're actually uh, ranked in the world. Um, and you got Manu Samoa coming in who are playing playing great games as well. And don't forget about Tonga uh, as well. You know, like, there's so many things can happen, and the main beneficiaries out of all of this are going to be the Wallabies because they could really easily fall ass first into a semi final. I'm going to see Eddie Jones cackling all the way to the semi final. What's going to be the storyline of the tournament? Is it going to be open attacking rugby or is it going to be dour defensive footy? As I think a lot of us fear. With discipline I, being the other D word. Yeah, well, that, that was what I was going to say. I think that there's been so much talk about referees, so much talk about red cards, um, so much talk about how it's going to swing games. I hope it doesn't. I hope that at least this first game can we can get we can get through it without any some sort of controversy. I hope we don't end up in a situation where it's like the America's Cup, where we're paying more attention to the judicial room, the lawyers, uh, rather than the actual on-field action. Um, but I think we're going to see some good rugby. There's too many good players uh, out there, um, too many good teams, uh, especially in the pool play. Um, you, you look at a football World Cup, we all the best goals are in the pool play, and they got players open it up. Once we get to the quarters, I think we're going to see a, a few adjustments. But yeah, I think we're going to see some really good rugby. Rising indiv- individual stars, who are you highlighting for our audience? Who do we need to ke- keep an eye on? Oh well, I think like probably the entire Fijian team, um, who we're going to get used to just because half of them play for the draw. And may I say. Uh, for the people out there who love to bag Super Rugby, um, the Fijian team would not be anywhere near as good as they are right now uh, without the drawer and the team and without th- those guys being able to play together all, all, uh, all the time. Um, so, you know, for all you bring back the NPC lot, that's the byproduct we've had and and, we're, and it's been a really, really important one um, for World Rugby. Across um, the other teams, I mean, there's, there's a bunch, man. I mean, like, uh, there's just... I, I, I really like um, the look of some of the young Australian players because we're going to get a forecast of like what their team's going to be like for the next four years, and they're going to build. No matter what you think of Eddie Jones, like there's a plan in place because they're hosting the next World Cup. So I think they're definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, but other than that, I, I think that you know just the pool stages are going to be the best part of this World Cup, and then we're going to get into the sort of more business end, um, you know, structured, disciplined, you know one penalty can kind of change a whole game sort of thing. The one, the only, Jamie Wall, the only man with guns. They match Mo, as quality as that, and a voice as smooth as your face. How's that? Oh, it's, it's, good, it's a good sales job, isn't it? That's, that's fantastic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> SCNZ, it's Kiwi for sport.